Good morning, and welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. It's so good to see you tuning in from wherever you are, and so good to see you all in the room today. Today is a wonderful gift of God, just like every day, but we get to spend this part of it together in worship and in song. I know that the Holy Spirit will be with us this morning as we worship. If you have any prayer requests this morning, I encourage you to drop it into the comments, and we'll weave that together as a pastoral prayer at the end of the service. I have a question of the day for you. To get the pump primed, we'll talk about it during the message. What was your first word? What was your first word? And if you don't know, because your parents never told you, um, if you have children, what was their first word? You might remember that. First word. All right. All right. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Good, everyone. Good morning, everyone here and over Zoom. We're glad that you are joining us. Let's all stand as you're able and sing, gather us in. Gather us in indeed. How about we gather some children down here? Come on down. It is good to have a couple, a few of you here. I think we have some in the nursery too. Do we? They're staying? That's where, they, that's where they're going to stay. Go, Nana. Go. <laughs> okay. So we just have, well, you know what? My children's moment, I had a big kid's version and a little kid's version. So I am going to tell you, which one do you want to hear? I've got two. What? Big? Okay, we'll do the big kids version. And just as a reminder to the adults, if you've got prayer requests this morning, please put them in the comments. And the question of the day is, what was your first word? I don't know. Do you know what? I have too many kids and I don't remember. I have to go look at I remember my first kid's first word, and after that, everything was a blur. But I did write it down. So we'll, we'll discuss this after church and whether or not I'm a good mom or I just got fired. Okay, so the um, big kid version of the children's sermon is, in the scripture today, it is from the Gospel of John, and Jesus uh, compared himself in a metaphor, a metaphor, mm -hmm. to being like a vine, and we are the branches that plug into that vine, right? That we get our energy from God that we need to stay connected to God. And there's a lot of ways that we can do that, but we need to focus on how do we make that connection strong. 
And you know what it reminded me of for you guys especially? When, you're, when your phone or your device is in airplane mode <laughs> and you didn't realize it, <laughs> right? If you're, if you, these kids are so wired up, they are on devices at all times. Whenever we go anywhere to a new place, what's the Wi-Fi password? It's the very first thing they want to know, right? So they can stay connected, right? But sometimes, not all the time. I'm exaggerating for the sake of humor right now. Uh, but parents know what I'm talking about with kids today. They want to be connected all the time. But sometimes your device switches itself and it doesn't get any signal at all. And you're like, oh my goodness, right? And you're running around and you're trying to see what's wrong because you want so much to be connected. I never put my device in airplane mode. Well, can you work with me on this one anyway? Okay, sure. Okay. all the time. Well, my phone sometimes, it just does this for no apparent reason. Have adults had this happen where you're like, what's going on? And then you look in your settings. Oh, I'm not connected. And so you connect in and you say, oh, I feel so much better, right? Now that I can get back to my important business of looking at memes and cats on the internet or whatever it is. I think that that's one way that you can talk about being connected to God, especially with prayer, which is what we're going to talk about today, is that sometimes we're not really connected to God. We haven't remembered to pray, and we're running around, and we're feeling stressed, and we're feeling anxious, and we're just like, ah, and then all of a sudden we say, oh, I'm not connected. That's what's wrong. And so we take a minute, and we get by ourselves, and we just say, okay, God, I want to be connected to you. And we take that breath, and we center ourselves, and all of a sudden, things feel so much better. Yeah. So in this metaphor, God is the router or the satellite, right? And we are the devices. I think Jesus would have done that if he had had internet. I think he would have said so. Yeah. I am the vine, and you are the branches. I am the router, and you are the device. <laughs> Thank you. There's a laugh. I thought it was kind of cute. Okay. The little kid version had to do with holding hands, staying connected. Okay. So you can preach that again uh, to the little one. All right. We're praying. Lord God, we're so thankful we can be connected to you. That's really humbling that you created the whole universe and everything in it, and yet you also want to hear from little old us. But you do. We thank you for being interested. And we thank you for helping us to stay centered and grounded and remembered that we're loved by you whenever we reach out and connect. I ask that you grow these kids so that they know about your love and connection with them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good morning. My name is Robin Wilson, and I am one of the members of the Wednesday Book Study Group on Zoom, and I am also the Aldersgate uh, Recording Secretary. I am blessed to be sharing the scripture reading with you today. Our reading comes from us from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch does, that does, does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Rena remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear as much fruit apart from me. You, can, without, you can't do nothing. Excuse me. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This 
is to my Father's glory that you will bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Thank you, Ms. Revan. All right. Question of the day. What was your first word? Let's have a moment of prayer. God, it is a wonderful thing to be able to talk to you and know that you hear. It is a wonderful thing to be able to listen to you, God. One of the ways that you speak to us, Lord, is through the scripture and through the interpretation through the word. And we ask, God, now that you would send your spirit to speak to us, that we would listen. I ask that you would enable me to speak clearly and to think clearly. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so you've had a little while to think. What are some first words that you recall, either your own or maybe of your child? Mama. Mama. Pretty, pretty good one, right? Mama. Anyone else? Oh, so I'm not the only one who forgets these things. Good, because I was like, I should have done my own research here beforehand and so that my kids wouldn't sit there folding their arms and scowling at me because I forget important information, right? Which was duck. That's kind of an unusual one, duck. Yes. My mom threw things at me all the time, and I was like, duck. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that is not true. Not true. And I'm sorry, because that probably wasn't a very good joke to tell. But um, no, we went to the park a lot, and I, and I had a book. And a rubber duck. A crocheted duck. Okay. Duck. Anyone else? First word? Hot. Okay. That's a good one, too. Right. Don't touch. Hot. Hot. Yeah. Car. Okay. Charlotte likes to be on an adventure. Car. Right? Awesome. Very good. Yes, yeah, right. Wesley used to bark. <laughs> Pre -verbal. We had a very barky dog who lived next door. His name was Sam, which is also funny because that's my husband's name. And uh, <laughs> Wesley would look over there and go, hum, hum, hum. <laughs> That's right. Yes, Bonnie. Are you kidding? She said that, uh, Bonnie says that her dad is, was a pastor, is a pastor, retired now, and a child in this congregation's first word was his name, Bob Sweet. That, wow, that's really humbling. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Very good. Well, drop your uh, first word in the comments or your kid's first word, and I'll be happy to look after the service. Okay, so hang on to that. Hang on to that. This summer, we're talking about staying connected with God. The scripture, um, I am the vine and you are the branches. I am the router and you are the device, right? We need to stay connected with God. If we're going to do anything uh, with the kingdom of God and for the kingdom of God, it's going to be because we're connected to God. And the ways that we're talking about this summer follow the writings of Marjorie Thompson. I brought her book, uh, the Wednesday study group that Robin mentioned, I read this book in the, the new year, right, January, February, and I wore a dress to match it, <laughs> as it turns out, I can see. It's called Soul Feast, and she writes a book on ways to stay connected with God, nine different ways that she identifies. These can also be called spiritual disciplines, and so this whole summer, we're going to go through and do different chapters, because she has some really good stuff, and uh, there are only about 10 of us on the group eight or ten of us on the group, so this way the whole church can hear about it. Last week, uh, we talked about spiritual reading, spiritual reading, um, and this week we'll talk about prayer. In Marjorie's writing, she gives just a little tiny, she's very talky in this chapter, very data-based and ideas-based, but she gives just a little reference to the idea that prayer, our communication with God, develops and matures a lot like language development between a child and their parent. Language development between a child and their parent happens according to chronological age, but development of the language of talking to God is not tied to developmental age at all, right? It's just seasons of faith where we learn 
first about our heavenly parent and then begin to speak to our heavenly parent. I loved this. This really opened, opened up this idea of prayer as a um, developing and maturing thing in our lives. And so I have five pictures for you. I did not put them up on the screen. These are pictures you have to imagine. And these are ways of thinking about the development of the way that we talk to God. The first one is an unborn baby, a baby in the womb. You've got that in your mind? Those wonderful pictures. I love to see it. You know, the baby sucking its thumb, all curled up, still connected to mama, right? The baby in the womb. The parent is outside. The parent is communicating. The parent is talking. We know that babies hear the voice of the parent, right? All around them and all the time, the most familiar voice. And sometimes the spouse will be nearby too, and that voice also becomes familiar to that baby in the womb. But the baby in the womb has no understanding of this idea of parent. This voice exists as part of the baby's reality, but the baby can't identify it as anything separate from themselves. And so the baby doesn't talk to the parent, right? It's this pre-understanding of the presence of the parent, the pre-understanding of the presence of God. There's adults 85 years old who live this way spiritually, right? That God is all around them and God is trying to communicate with them and show them things, but they have no awareness of a separate God who loves them. So there's no communication yet with the parent, with the divine parent. That's the baby in the womb before we begin to pray, before we have knowledge of God. Now think about that newborn. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Maybe you've experienced this or seen it, and I don't know, on your device when you were connected to your router. Um, uh, when uh, the, especially it's when the dad speaks after a baby is born that I think is cool. Like mom speaks, fine. You know, baby's been hearing mom's voice. We expect the baby to turn their head towards mom. But when dad speaks or a sibling speaks and the baby looks because it's familiar, what a beautiful thing. All of a sudden, this infant has this understanding, oh, that thing that was around me all the time that I never noticed is something different from me exists as its own entity over there. This is when we first start coming to faith. Now, people come to faith in all sorts of different ways. Some people, it's like lightning bolt. Some people don't remember because it's since they were a little baby that they believed in God. But some people kind of test the idea for a while or wonder about it because there's friends like you around them who do believe in God. And so they might try it on. I wonder. And they turn their head. Is that the voice of God? just starting to understand that there's a voice coming towards them saying loving things. The infant, still not communicating with God, but wondering, oh, what's that? What's that again? Adults 85, 90 years old. Huh. Look at that. Not tied to chronological age, spiritual age here. First word, here's where the question of the day comes in. That first word that a child says has to do with something in extremely important, right? If they're going to work to create that first word, if they're going to desire to communicate, it's going to be immediate. It's going to be urgent, like the word hot, right? That's a good one. Mama, right? Because we need to have mom here now because mom needs to give us something, right? A, a duck, I have no explanation for. That was my first, who, who knows why I was thinking duck. Um, but you, my friend, my young friend, when you, the only first word I remember is from my first child, and he said more, more, <laughs> which he pronounced ma, but it was not mama, it was ma, 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 right? More, more. It's something you need. Car, right? Something you desire so much. Yeah. That very first word is going to be a thing of primary importance. <laughs> I should have grown up to be like a duck scientist or something. I'm still working on this duck. Uh, but anyway, you know, a foul joke. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, sorry, people at home. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's going to be really important. And this is the prayer that a lot of people pray, whether or not they have an active and living relationship with God. It's when there's something really, really important, and they send one up because, out of desperation, right? God, please help. Please help. Let me live. Let them live. Save me. Very, very important, critical first words to God. That's the little tiny child. Now, imagine an older child, and I'm thinking in particular of a six-year-old boy. Anybody have a ready picture of a six-year-old boy in their head? You've been around one? I can think of a number of boys that I've known, and when they've been six, I don't know why it's just boys, but it, I really notice it with them. They get into this phase where they have so much information and so much detail and so much facts in their minds about whatever topic. I remember my friend Alex, when I babysat for him 25 years ago, Pokemon cards. He would just go on and on and on, and he would stand right next to me, and he would just talk to me, and he would go like this. And, and he was telling me about it, and it was so important, and he had so many words, and he barely even caught a breath. And he was so happy to tell me every single thing on his mind. It was like, relentless, you know? He knew that I was a listening, loving presence in his life and that, you know, assumed that I was fascinated by Pokemon <laughs> cards at that time. And then when my boys were the same age, I remember watching them. Ba, 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 talk, talk, talk. There's that stage of communication with God development, where we've turned our heads, we've said, oh, there's a God. We've cried out to God. We've asked God for help. And now we're like, God, I'm going to tell you everything. This is what's going on and with my friend, and, the, and I'm worried about this, and what about the world? And God, talk, 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 talk. Because we know that our heavenly parent wants to hear from us. I think that a lot of us have arrived at that place and may stay there most of the time. When you have your devotion time, your prayer life with God, it's a lot of talk, 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 talk. Direction of the communication is going this way, out of the mouth towards the parent, right? Just incessant talking. That's good. God's happy, just like I was happy to hear from my friend Alex and from my boys too, and also my girls. Yeah, parent loves to hear, but the direct, the the words are only coming one way. So last week, another one of my children gave me a sermon illustration. Thank goodness I had kids. I mean, what would I even talk about? But I'm supposed to talk about what you know about, so that's going to be kids for me. It was the end of the day. It was time to get ready for bed. We we're sort of uh, going around in a routine. And um, in case you couldn't tell from the loud sigh that I just heard from the front row, I was trying to keep you anonymous. My goodness. <laughs> um, kiddo looks at me and says, how was your day? What? Seriously, I was floored. I actually, it's probably true that some child of mine has ever said this to me, but it was like how an adult would do, like looking, like genuine interest. How was your day? Out of a child. Children don't ask, right? Children are so busy telling you things all the time. To get genuine interest, how was your day? I was, so, I was like, thanks for asking. And I told her a thing or two about my day. All of a sudden, instead of the communication just going like all like this, I'd like to hear something back. Imagine that. That we could mature in our prayer lives to, of course, tell God what's on our heart, but then maybe to stop for a moment and listen to see if God has anything to say to us. Another step in maturity, a taller child. Now we're going to skip forward in time, I don't know, 80 years. Last picture. A couple who's been married for 60 years. 60 years. This is not a parent-child one. This is now a married couple. 60 years. You know, they can say what each other would say. They know what the other person thinks, right? They talk, of course, you know, about the news and things like this, the grandkids, the great-grandkids. But they don't even have to use words to understand one another. They can just be. 
and they love just being in each other's presence. That, I think, is the most mature form of communication with God. None are bad, none are wrong. I, I don't want to load this and say, you know, the earlier ones are not good. That's not what I'm saying. But as we examine ourselves and where we are in our relationship with God, what about just being? That's what Marjorie Thompson would call contemplation, just resting in the presence of God, not needing to hear, not needing to say, but just enjoying the company of the one that you love so much. So you've got five pictures, uh, infant, a baby inside the womb, right? Doesn't even know God yet. Now we've got an infant just hearing God's voice the first time, toddler starting to speak the most important thing to God, six-year-old child just running their mouth, telling all the things one direction, bigger child, or maybe adult, how was your day? Starting to listen. And then the married couple where it's just about being together. Where do you find yourself? Where do you hang out? in that chronology in your prayer life. What about the people around you? Think about that too. You may have a very good friend who's still inside the womb. When I was developing this, I think it was on Friday, and thinking about being still inside the womb, and then I heard, you have to be born again. I was like, oh, cool, right? You have to be born to start listening to God's voice in this metaphor. And I loved that because, I don't know, where I grew up, the born-again stuff, it just made me nervous because we weren't, like, part of that church tradition. It seemed like Bible thumping. But try that on with this model of maturing into communication with God. You need to be born again so that you can speak to God. So where are you? Where are your friends? Jesus says, I'm the vine and you are the branches. We have to stay connected with God if we want to be any part of what God's doing in this world. So God bless you. God be with you in your prayer life this week. Think about those five pictures. Stretch. See if you can grow. Amen. Thank you. Amen. For our special, we're going to sing... I am the vine. You're welcome to be seated. The words will be up there, but we're going to sing this. This is a new tune called I am the vine.
Johnny, I love that. Thank you. That's nice pick. Yeah. You know, uh, Johnny, I just realized Johnny has been serving as our interim music director since January to allow us to do, um, you know, a really deliberate, thoughtful search for our next music director. Uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel. Ooh, David Hahn is Daniel. arriving the first Sunday in August. And uh, Johnny, you've passed us through. We have um, three more services with you leading music. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just really been such a delight. Will you just give him a hand because... Thank you. I think that he was thinking maybe it would be like a month or two. A month. Yeah, a month. <laughs> oh. oh, well, seriously, uh, you're earning treasure in heaven. Thank you. Yes, indeed. All right, so a few things for us. Um, announcements are a week from today, the 26th member main mission team is leaving. We'll have a, a send off during the worship tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, next Sunday, which means there'll be at least that many people in the room, which is really good. You can't stay home for the mission team send off. Um, so that'll be good. Uh, we thought there was going to be a little part of another church that was going to join us, and then they said, ah, we're, we're just going to take it easy this summer. Okay. So that's why we have 26 people going. We're headed up to Machias, Maine for a week of serving with Neighbors Helping Neighbors Down East doing home construction. So come here next Sunday, see the team, pray for them, and uh, start praying now uh, in advance that the way would be clear for that team. Also, in five weeks, Vacation Bible School begins, and so likewise, we covet your prayers for the success of that program. It's August 22nd through 26th in the morning. We're inviting our friends from the Little Treasures Schoolhouse uh, who are here at the daycare during the week. We're inviting our church friends. You may invite your friends preschool to fifth grade. Um, we're looking forward to that and have a wonderful team of volunteers assembled. So there's links for both of those things in the Facebook comments if, um, if you would like to know more. Oh, because the main mission team is collecting money to pay for nails and shingles and um, I don't know, all the construction supplies, the paint that we're going to be using. I would have to collect uh, just shy of $3,000 for that. So if you want to join in what we're doing, you can make a donation under the drop-down menu. It says main mission. And thank you very much. Okay. For celebration and thanks, I uh, did it early. I'm celebrating and thanking Johnny uh, for his faithfulness, for sticking around uh, and with patience and grace and humor. Um, and I'm just really glad that we have a couple more weeks with you uh, in the driver's seat. Thank you. All right. Clap one more time. Yay, John. <laughs> we should just clap. When you walk in the room, showers just of applause. I think that would be fine. Trumpet fanfares, things like that. Very good. Um, all right. Well, thank you for sending in your prayer requests this morning. Um, I had a number come in during the week as well. We've got them, Sammy? Okay. Stretch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sam was on his phone. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Get those ducks in a row. Maybe that's why my first word was duck. Yes, Bonnie. The, um, the reconnaissance crews up there in Maine right now, and they've already met um, at least one of the families that they are going to be excited and actually have to get them to work up there. All right, so we have, 
we have a recon team who's already up at Machias learning about the projects we're doing, and I imagine a fair amount of that is going to be up on a roof. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> Very good. I got them all before the service. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, help us to remain in you, whether it be through prayer, assembling for worship, spiritual reading, whatever our practice is, God, that connects us most readily to, uh, to you. God, allow us just to rest there and be grateful. Thank you for being with us this morning today, and thank you for hearing our prayers. I lift to you especially first the ones that are unspoken and ask that you administer to those who hold them. To those prayers, we add prayers for those for whom we're concerned, for those struggling with or in recovery from addiction, and for those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety, God. We ask for healing. We pray for those who sustained loss this year, whether the loss of a loved one or a job or good health, and ask that you would comfort them. We continue in prayer for Marie LaRose's friend, Marie Patrice Mass, in hospice care, and also for Marie's friend, Donna, who's recovering from a double mastectomy. We continue to ask for your provision for our new music director, David Hahn, and his husband, Young Gook, who is looking for a florist job. We pray for Meredith family friend, Jane Cutler, with upcoming cancer surgery this week, and for Bob Kingsley and Linda Watts friends, Paul and Kathy, who were involved in a very bad car accident while traveling in Scotland. We ask that you would help them. God, there's joys in our midst today for the summer holiday, for time away, for rest, vacations, and travel. For the upcoming main mission trip, we, God, we ask for safety and team building. We're also praying for those that we will serve. God, we pray for in advance for Vacation Bible School and ask that you would help us extend meaningful invitations and that we would be a blessing to those families. And finally, God, today uh, we ask that you'd be with Jason Montes and his fiancée, Tina, who are getting married on Friday and just um, let them enjoy that day so much. Uh, let it be the start of just a wonderful season in their relationship. God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you all. It's so good to see you here in the building and here online. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Let us sing our way out. All right. Let's all stand and join singing More Love to Thee. <laughs>